What's happening everybody? Steve here, Cars with Steve, and today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the Uconnect 5 media screen inside of the Jeep Grand Cherokee L. Now, this is going to be a pretty in-depth walk around going over everything you need to know about this media screen. I'm going to be showing you how to set up Android Auto Apple CarPlay using factory navigation and going through all of these different settings. So let's dive into it, have a little bit of fun, and see what's going on inside of that media screen. This is the 10.1 inch media screen, so the Uconnect 5 screen that is available optionally inside of some of the trim levels, standard in some of the others, but beautiful look here and a lot of great functionality. So looking at some of the basics along the very top left hand side, we can adjust easily what's going on with our temperature, so we can just literally do a slide there. We do have the flexibility of going down a bit further in order to do it there as well if we want to. We can turn our heated seat on at a minimum. If we also had ventilated seats, that would show up as an option there. We've got our heated steering wheel, which again, hot button press there. We can also do a hot button press a little bit further down as well. If we had the ventilated seats, they would show up as an option there, as well as in that main menu. Up along the very top here, we do have a profile button, so we can select between different profiles there. We can add in multiple profiles as well, so we can link a few things out, our certain preferences, what's going on with our media screen, things like that, our phones, etc. will all be linked to our individual profile. We've got our valet mode along the bottom here as well, which is literally going to lock the screen out. We're using a number, so we do have to enter a number in in order to be able to lock the screen out, but it is kind of cool that we've got that flexibility. We can easily edit profiles as well, so if you want to edit the driver name, what's going on with the seat memory, welcome profiles, etc. So we can set those things up easily if we need to. We've got our notification center, so if we had any active notifications, it would let us know. We can see what the current temperature is. We've got our basics for our clock. We've got a little slide down menu here, which gives us quite a few other options as well. So that's kind of a neat one. So we can literally just push in order to be able to get rid of it. We can pull down in order to be able to show it up as well. So we've got our backup camera, which we can show that. We can zoom as well if we'd like to. Moving back down again, so as you can see, we've got our temperature, profiles, notifications, we've got our passenger voice, we've got our family camera. Look at this, so we can see exactly what's going on behind us there, like, hello! <laughs> so it is kind of neat that we've got that option in the back there as well, so we can see exactly what's going on in behind us there. We've also got our Wi-Fi hotspot, which if the vehicle itself is equipped with an onboard modem, we do need a data-only plan through our cell phone provider in order to be able to have that going on, but it is nice that we've at least got that option. Moving back into our home screen there, we do also have some customizable widgets. So the widget's kind of a neat one because we can set up each widget to have different things. So we can have it so that it's now playing, climate, etc. So if we had it set up for climate, so we can literally customize this thing if we want to, we can stretch it out, we can hop into it as well. But let's go line by line here. So starting off with our media, we can change between AM, FM, Sirius, XM, etc. If we had our phone connected, that would show up as an option. If we had other media connected there, that would also show up. We can change between songs or stations this way. We've got all of our available presets. We can easily scrap our presets there as well if we want to. We can see what's currently playing. We can easily tune to a station this way. So if we want to, we can go change the station if we want to go that route. We've got our presets down along the bottom there. And on any of the available presets, we can press and hold. We can just hold to save as well. And it's just a button press there nice and quickly in order to be able to save it. So as you saw there, we can also change between so our sources along the very top. So we've got our sources there. We've got a few options that are available. We've got what's currently playing. We've got our browse, so for all of our stations or our presets. We've got our audio settings there as well. So we've got our bass balance and fade. We've got our equalizer, speed adjusted volume, surround sound. We can autoplay, so autoplay is a neat one. So when a USB device is connected, audio will automatically turn on. Same idea for a radio radio off with the door so the radio is going to stay on when the, until the driver door is opened we've got our volume adjustment there as well so we can literally adjust what's going on with each individual system volume which is a nice thing because if we wanted our navigation to go a little bit lower we can have that option if we want our media to be defaulted a little bit louder we've also got that flexibility as well so it is nice to know that we've got quite a few audio settings here Moving into our climate tab, so really, really great look and very similar so on our home screen there so we set that up as an individual widget Jumping in, we've got some more advanced options. We do have some options a little bit further down here as well, but let's go through some of the basics. So we can control the front or the rear. We can literally lock it out. So if people in the back seat are fighting over what the temperature should be, we can lock it out for them as well. We can easily adjust what's going on at the back temp and what's going on with the driver passenger side. We can adjust the heat there as well, which is kind of a neat one. So we can turn the heated seats on from here. There are button presses down there, or we can turn it on from the screen as well if we wanted to go that route. This heated steering wheel, same idea. We can have it going to our head, face, feet, etc. Some sort of a combination. And looking there, we've got a few other options. So max AC, air conditioner, etc. We can sync it up so that the driver and the passenger will be the same. It'll always default when we sync it up to be whatever the driver's side is. 
looking at our navigation there. So the vehicle itself is equipped with factory navigation and it is very straightforward. So we can literally adjust there as we need to. We can do a pinch to zoom so we can pinch in, pinch out, etc. We can recenter it as well if we wanted to. So just press the recenter button there and it's going to recenter us out back in the middle. We've got our compass there. We can adjust what's going on with the actual volume as well. So it's an alert. We've got it muted out or we've got it unmuted. So we're going to get everything. We've got our base menu there, so we can search for addresses, which is actually kind of a neat one. So we can easily search for an address there. We can search by GPS coordinates. We can literally start typing, and it's going to be a predictive text as well. So we start typing in, and we just give it a second to think about what's going on. As you can see, we've got quite a few options there. So we're just going to randomly select. And from there, we've got either the option of pressing drive to get it going, or we can press this button to save it as a favorite, use it as a starting point, or search near. So if we hit drive, that's going to get the route going and it gives us a few different options that are available. So we can literally select or we just hit drive in order to get the route going. And one of the great things is that we do have the route options there and then inside of that middle screen, so inside of the cluster screen as well, the directions will show up. We've got some other options that are available as well, so we can add in stops either to parking, gas, food, etc. We will arrive at your destination at 12.38 p.m. Why, thank you. We've got our route overview. We can find alternative routes. We've got our turn-by-turn -turn directions as well. So we do have some flexibility as to what's showing up and how it's showing up. And we've got a distance indicator, so how close or how far. Ooh, button press. So we can figure out exactly how close or how far we are away from finishing the route. We can end the route very simply there, so we can hit don't show me again to permanently make sure it never shows that message and just cancels it when we say cancel. But it is nice to know we've got quite a bit of flexibility there. Moving inside here, we've got our home and work address that we can set up. We can see our recently done destinations. We've got some favorites, different trips that we've made. We've got some options for our maps there as well. So what kind of maps do we want to be able to see? And we've got some navigation settings. So navigation settings, quite a few options there, so we can show different options. There we go, so we've got our traffic flow. Do we want to show our distance and arrival times? Our sidebar there, yes or no. Vehicle range, and then our point of interest. And moving back, we've got our map view and then some routing options. So our preferred route type, do we want the fastest, shortest, and the most eco-friendly route? Do we want to avoid things like toll roads, unpaved roads, etc.? So we do have the flexibility to be able to select whatever is not going to show up there in our route fastest route when available so if the vehicle senses that there's you know upcoming traffic jams things like that it can have it so that it can give us options for what's going on there send destination to the phone so it is kind of neat that we've got that option as well and moving back we've also got some other sounds and alerts so this is going to be all with our directions etc so as we're coming up to different options read out aloud so we do do we want it to read out certain things so our street name signs for names etc we've got our camera settings safety warnings and that's kind of a neat one. So we've got different settings there. So whether or not these things show up, going to be a matter of preference. Traffic jam ahead. Alert types. How are we going to get it? Is it going to be a visual or is it going to be visual and sound? So we've got a little bit of flexibility as to what's showing up with the actual sounds in the map. Looking at some basic other settings. So we've got basic and then our privacy and then about as well. And that's going to be the basics of the navigation. Next up, adding in a phone is a very straightforward process. So we've got the option. Do you want to add in a phone? Yes. On our phone, we're just going to make sure that Bluetooth is enabled. Yes, and we're looking for this in the very bottom. So are you connect name? So we're gonna hit yes there. Okay, make sure that the pin numbers match up, which they do. Allow contacts and favorites to sync. Yes, we wanna do that. Boom, there we go. We are now fully connected. So really that straightforward to be able to do it. And one of the cool things, ah, I love Uconnect 5 because it's wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So we don't have to physically be connected through USB anymore. So we do have the option on my phone there, as you can see, do you want to use car, do you want to connect to CarPlay? So yes, we want to use it. And we're going to hit okay on the screen. And we're just waiting for options on the phone. So it should take a second there. There we go. And CarPlay should, yeah, loading up automatically across this beautiful screen. And that's one of the great things because, yeah, we can rely on factory navigation if we want to. We do have the flexibility to be able to use Apple Maps. We can use Google Maps or we can use Waze all through this middle screen. And it is stretched out across the entire screen. Up along the very top, we do have our Siri Assistant there. We can jump back to this main screen as well. But beautiful look here. Like, I, I personally love the way that this thing looks. We've got some basic settings there as well. And we do have the flexibility under General. We can go CarPlay. We're going to look for the vehicle and Customize. And we can literally drag and drop to be able to adjust this as we'd like to. So you listen to certain things. We can easily remove some things. If we remove too many things, they do show up along the very bottom. And we can also always just do a factory reset to bring us back to that factory default setting instead. 
instead. So we do have some flexibility there, jumping back to this main screen. So it really is that simple setting up Android Auto and Apple CarPlay inside of it, but this is the Apple CarPlay side, which it looks great, functions very, very nicely. Now we do have the flexibility of setting up Android Auto, so let's actually go through and set up an Android device as well. So as of right now, I'm going to leave this phone, so this iPhone connected. So what we're gonna do is go to apps on the very bottom. If we've got multiple phones connected, we've got our favorites, recent, or we can go category view category view we've got a few other options we're specifically looking for phone we've got our apple carplay or a device manager so let's go into device manager there and as you can see we've got my currently connected iphone so we've got that we can select between our bluetooth or you wanted to go that route or we can keep our carplay enabled right now connecting an android device is literally the exact same process so what we're going to do is hit add device there and we're going to make sure that we're searching for available devices and on our phone we're just looking for the you connect there and we're just going to start connecting and it'll take a second perfect bluetooth pairing yes we want to make sure we connect and yes perfect and do we want to make it our favorite yes or no uh, sure let, no, let's let's skip it for now but we do have the option of connecting android auto and very similar it is done wirelessly so we're going to hit okay there and on our phone we're just waiting for a second let's allow contacts and messages why not as you can see there, it's working and connecting Android Auto, three, two, and let's continue. So Android Auto will turn on Bluetooth, etc. So we're just gonna continue there. And three, two, one, as you can see there, we are fully connected. So we've got our notification center. We've got the Google Assistant along the very bottom there. We've got our base settings there for Google Maps. We can actually hop into our main screen there as well for Android Auto. So really, really great that we've at least got that flexibility. Same thing on the Apple side of things. We can customize the launcher there. We can literally use a few different map applications as well. Now, that's the kicker because as of right now, only through Android Auto, you've only got the option of using Google Maps directly through this middle screen wirelessly. So something to think about there. We don't necessarily have the same flexibility as we do on the Apple side of things for certain map applications. But if for whatever reason your applications aren't showing up here, few things to consider. Make sure your vehicle's up to date, make sure your phone is up to date, and make sure Android Auto is up to date on your cell phone as well, because if everything's not up to date, certain things may not necessarily work. But as you can see there, we are now connected. We can, we can launch Uconnect phone. We can go into our device manager along the very bottom. And as you can see there, we've got both phones there. So we can literally select one as our favorite if we want to. So if we go there, we can make it as our favorite. We can enable the phone, enable Bluetooth audio, or we can delete the device. So if we delete, as you can see there, that's straightforward. Same idea, we're gonna delete this device as well. Boom, look at that. So the devices are deleted from the phone, from the vehicle, it really is that simple to be able to set a phone up, go back into phone, they're disconnected. So that simple setting up a phone inside of this vehicle. So let's cancel out of that. And as you can see there, so it was pretty straightforward to be able to set that one up. Moving into some vehicle options now. So tons of different options there, starting off off-road. So we do have our off-road pages that are available there. So let's just launch those pages. There we go, as you can see, we can see what's going on with our current steering angle as well. So we can easily move the wheel in order to change the angle out there. We've got our accessory gauges, so we can see our coolant temperature, oil temp, things like that. We can see our pitch and roll, so what's going on with the actual vehicle there, and our drivetrain. So we've got different select train options there. So as of right now, it's in the auto mode. If we're in the sport mode, we've got a slightly different look. If we go into different modes, like our snow mode, as well as our, snow, our, sand, and snow, our sand and mud mode, I should say. So as I said, each mode is going to do something different, and it does give it a different look in this middle screen as well. So it is kind of nice to know that we've got at least, at least a little bit of flexibility there as to the overall look and feel of this. And that's going to be the basics for our vehicle pages. Next up, we've got some basic for our apps. So as you can see there, I say basics, but we've got quite a bit of flexibility. So we can save some things as favorites. We can look at recent ones that we've gone to. We've got our basic categories, so we've got our media, comfort, navigation, etc. And that's essentially going to be more or less everything that's available laid out slightly differently. Because if we go to all, look at this. So many options! So many options! So, we can, like I said, we can favorite some things out if we wanted to do that. So we can save certain options. So our audio settings, Bluetooth, comfort, things like that. And then we literally, so let's say if we were to go comfort. There we go. So as you can see there, it jumps us into our comfort screen. Go back to apps we've got a few other options there now so we have quite a little bit of flexibility we can start and save it to add it to our favorites because when we exit out of that go into our favorites we just save comfort so now we can go apps comfort to jump into that option to jump into that screen instead so we do have some flexibility as to what's showing up and how it's showing up in there and that's all through this literally all button there in our app screen so we can literally adjust exactly what's going on in each individual thing 
jumping back into our vehicle settings there, we've got some more advanced for our controls. And that's actually something I missed. So we've got our control settings there. So we've got our third row headrest fold, so we can power fold our headrest from the front here. We've got our fan cam option, so we can see exactly what's going on behind us there. Our rear view camera there as well. So pretty straightforward. And we've got some more advanced settings. So we've got our display, so we've got our English. Uh, yeah, there we go. So we've got Spanish, English, Italian, and French. Moving back, we've got some different display modes. So it's in our auto mode, so it's gonna flip us between a day or a nighttime mode, depending on how bright it is outside. We can set up our units, so whether we're, mess we're going kilometers or miles per hour, etc. So we can literally customize everything there. Navigation, how is that showing up in the cluster screen? Yes or no. We can set up individual profiles, so different languages, display modes, things like that for this unique profile, which is kind of nice. Safety and driving. So emergency braking. So if the vehicle senses a potential collision, it's going to actively brake for us. We've got our forward collision sensing system there as well. Active lane management. So we've got our lane manager, which if the vehicle senses that we're starting to veer over without singling, either give us a little bit of a, a shake on our steering wheel here, or it'll gently nudge us back into our lane as well. We can turn those settings on or off. So as you can see there, we can do a vibration. We can kind of change things out as we'd like to. Moving back, we've got our park sensing system. So as we're going to back up, if a vehicle recognizes that there's potentially something there, we can get a warning or can actively brake for us as well. And how loud is that? Our blind spot system, is it going to give us a light or a chime? Nothing whatsoever. And that's just the blind spot system on our side view mirrors. We've got our power steering. So how is that going to be? I do recommend, ooh, settings. Sport mode, so nice by default. It's just gonna tighten things up a little bit more. Where's our comfort? We're gonna have to spin the wheel a little bit more instead. So you've got some options there. He'll start assist there as well. We've got our clock, so how is that set up? So our 12 or 24 hour mode, and does it sync up with our GPS there? And moving down, we've got our phone Bluetooth, which we've seen some of these things already. So our base device manager, we can do dis do not disturb, or we can activate two phones. So if two phones are connected to the vehicle, we can have it so that both of them, it will listen for phone calls and things like that as we go. We can have the vehicle listen for wake words, so we can have this screen show up, and we can literally do things like change navigation, things like that, using our voice. We can change the radio and a few other things as well. So we can literally tune to a station if we want to. Cancel. We can just cancel the setting out. If we want to, we can have it listen to a male or female voice. So I actually want you to listen to something because we do have a wake word right now, and that's going to be that Uconnect. So, hey, Uconnect. Tune to 94.9. Boom. So it's tuned us to 94.9 along the top there. So it is nice that we've got that option. We can show our command list, which this is going to be the command list there. So whether or not that one shows Cancel. up is going to be a matter of preference. We've got some more navigation settings as well. So we we've, we dug into a few of those settings a little bit earlier. We've got some other options for our camera. So our backup camera there. If we had our full 360 camera as well, so we're in the higher trim levels, that would have different options that would be available to us as well. Our mirrors and wipers. We've got some basic for our lights. So our headlight delay when we go to lock, do our lamps stay on, yes or no? Do we want the outdoor greeting lights showing up as well? Auto high beam dim. So if the vehicle senses that there's somebody behind in front of us, it's going to dim our high beams and then flip them on automatically for us as well. And when that person passes, our brake, we've got our auto park brake. So when we go to turn the vehicle off, do our, does our parking brake come on automatically? Our doors and locks. When we turn the vehicle off, do we want the, the vehicle doors to unlock automatically? Yes or no. When we go to lock it, do we want to have the horn come on? Yes or no. Sound horn with remote start, things like that. So we do have quite a few options that are available there. Our power lift gate, we can turn that one on or off if we want to as well. Moving down, we've got some seats and comfort settings. So easy exit seats, when we go to turn the vehicle off, the driver passenger seat will load down and then back up as well in order to be able to get out of the seats a little bit easier. Same idea with our heated seat and steering wheel. Do we want those things to come on, yes or no? When we start the vehicle, do we want to have it with a remote start or all starts there as well? Key options there, so we've the same idea. We've got our easy exit seats, we've got our headlight delay, radio delay as well as our radio off with our door when it opens up. So if we have that one on and our radio is going, radio won't actually turn off when we turn the car off until we open the door. Our audio settings, so we've already seen the audio settings there. So we've got our base settings. We've got some notifications as well. So we've got a few different options that are available there. So how are our notifications showing up and which, specifically which notifications are gonna be showing up as well. 
From there, we've got our Sirius XM set up, so we can set up individual profiles if we want to. So as you can see there, we can look, set up our favorites, listening history, we can look at our listener settings as well. So if you have a preference, you know, you want to block explicit content, tune to start, we can reset our history as well. So if you're a heavy Sirius XM user, we, we can manage quite a few settings inside of this thing as well. So it is nice that we've got that flexibility. Moving back, we've got some system updates. So if our vehicle has a system update that's available, we can have that one set up there as well with our software updates. We can download it over Wi-Fi. Just need to make sure that we're connected to Wi-Fi at home. System information, so we can see what's going on with our current vehicle info, and then we can do a reset. So we can reset our radio, we can reset our drawers, we can clear all personal data, or we can, re we can reset it to our factory default settings there instead. So if we played around with things too much, we don't kind of like what we've done, or if we're selling the vehicle, etc., factory reset to bring us back to our default settings there instead. And then back to apps there, so we've already seen the basic setups there, but that's going to be the basics of the Uconnect 5 media screen inside of the vehicle. So that is pretty cool, right? Tons of different options that are available, and if you ran into any problems, Problems, though. You have any questions? Drop down in the comment section below and let me know. More than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. But if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your social networks. Until I see you next time, take care.